A new version of the Raspberry Pi Zero is on the market, and obviously, I gotta have one. So now I gotta figure out what to do with it. This video is gonna be a little bit different than my previous videos because I'm gonna take you guys behind the scenes to show you what it takes to build a project from the ground up. The primary selling point of the Raspberry Pi Zero is its size. Yes, this is a full-fledged Linux computer. So many possibilities, it's hard to choose just one. So let's just go with the first thing that pops in my head. Uh, fart machine. Dang it! In all truth, that was my initial idea that I was going to do for April Fool's Day, but now that that has gone and passed, I've decided to flesh out the idea a little bit more and try to turn it into a Spotify server that shows album art. And the Raspberry Pi Zero has built-in Wi-Fi, which makes this a great candidate for the project. But unfortunately, it doesn't have any audio out. So if I'm gonna make this project work, I gotta find some way to plug in speakers to the Raspberry Pi Zero. So guess what this video is gonna be about? But Tinkernut, why would you need to make anything? Surely you can just buy an audio output. Don't be ridiculous. Why would I buy something like that and miss out on all the potential knowledge of making it myself? Pretend that's not there. If you wanna go ahead and buy an option, you're more than welcome to, but I'm gonna take it a step nerdier. Now, since the Pi Zero doesn't have the audio output or connections for it, we're gonna to have to make our own connections through the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. So the first thing I'm gonna do is solder some pins to the GPIO port so that I can connect stuff to it easier. And the next step is to set up software on the Raspberry Pi. It accepts a micro SD card, so I have a little one of those, and you can download the software for free from the raspberrypi.org website. It downloads the Raspbian operating system as an image, and then to get the image onto the SD card, I'm gonna download a program called Win32 Disk Imager for Windows. Then I'll just run that whenever everything's done downloading, select my SD card, and then burn the image to the SD card by clicking right. Then I just take that and put it in the Raspberry Pi and plug in an HDMI monitor, a keyboard and mouse and power and let it boot up. The first thing I always do is connect it to the network by clicking on the wireless icon in the upper right. Then I can right click on that same icon, go to configuration settings and give it a static IP address. And then clicking on the menu, going down to preferences and Raspberry Pi configuration, I can go to interfaces and enable SSH. And this is how I'm gonna remotely configure the Raspberry Pi. If you don't live in the UK, you can also go to localization settings and click on set keyboard to set it to a US standard keyboard. Raspberry Pi up and running, check. Audio output, here we go. So luckily after doing some Googling, I found this fantastic post on the Adafruit blog detailing how to make your own PWM audio output for the Raspberry Pi Zero. It's gonna require making a little circuit. So here's the parts. You're gonna need two 270 ohm resistors, two 150 ohm resistors, two 10 UF electrolytic capacitors, and two 0.01 UF or 0.33 UF polyester film capacitors. Then you also need some spare wire and an audio jack. I'm gonna breadboard this out first. I'm gonna connect the ground GPIO pin to the breadboard and then insert the polyester film capacitors with one lead connected to the ground. Now I'm gonna put in the 150 ohm resistors also with one lead of each of those to the ground. Next is the 270 ohm resistors with one of them going to GPIO pin 13 and the other one going to GPIO pin 18. Then you wanna take the remaining legs of half of those components and connect it to the positive side of a 10 UF capacitor. And then just do a mirror image of that for the remaining components. Lastly, you wanna connect the negative leads of the 10 UF capacitors to the audio jack. So diagrams aside, essentially this is what my breadboard looks like. Now I'm gonna take this cheap little powered speaker that I got online and plug it in. And now let's see if we can make something happen. Earlier, I enabled SSH on the Raspberry Pi so that I could talk to it from a different computer. So now let's do that. To use SSH on Windows at the moment, you need a separate piece of software. I'm gonna be using Putty, which is a well-respected SSH client. 
Once it's installed, I'm going to type in the Raspberry Pi static IP address that I set and click open. And now I can just log in with the default username and password. What I need to do is force the audio through GPIO pins 13 and 18 on the Raspberry Pi. So to do this, I'm going to open up the config.txt file on the Raspberry Pi and add this line to do that. I'm going to restart it to make the changes take effect and when it boots back up, I'm going to log back in and do sudo raspy config to get into the configuration. From here, I can go into the advanced options and select audio and choose to force the audio through the headphone jack. By default, the volume is set pretty low on the Raspberry Pi, so you can type in this command to get to the audio settings and then just use the up arrow key to increase the audio. And after finishing out of that, I'm just going to play a test wave file to see how it does. Front center. I nailed it. But obviously, I'm not going to leave everything on a breadboard. So the next thing is to take some perforated circuit board and solder all these different components to it. And I found these nice little male-female header pins so that I could really easily attach it to the Raspberry Pi. Having audio output on the Raspberry Pi really makes it a cool device with a ton more applications. And for me, this is just one step closer to my end goal. And I really hope I get there because I'll be really disappointed if it doesn't work out. What ideas would you like me to cover next? Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. Click here to watch more videos like this. And if you got any value out of my show and would like to give some value back, please feel free to like, subscribe, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.